Hey guys and welcome to my beginner's Jack and Mary guide for 2020. So when you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. So Yakamaru is a boss where these stats are probably almost necessary. You do not want to have any stats lower than the recommended stats on screen, being 90 plus combat stats, 95 plus prayer, 96 plus herb lore, and 96 plus summoning. You definitely want to have a BOB familiar when you're at Yakamaru at all times. Here's a list of useful things for Yakamari. This list is pretty straightforward. The more you have on this list, the better, and it will make your life easier at Yakamari. I don't want to go too in-depth on these items or things because I want to cover the boss mainly in this video. Here are all the drops you can get at Yakamari, but on average, you can expect 2 to 3 million GP per kill. You also get the Mazcap currency every kill called Techie, which you can use in the reward shop to increase your chances of getting the actual Acto armor pieces by getting the regular ones or buying Mazcap ability codexes. Yakamaru has a combat level of 10,000 and he has 1 million life points. He isn't immune to stuns, but do not stun the Northern Pool. Ever. He is, however, immune to poison, and there are five phases and mirage, but you should just refer to it as pre-mirage and mirage. Now, before you can kill Yakamaru, which is something I've mentioned and showcased in my Beastmaster Durzak guide, you have to clear the puzzle. The puzzle is basically killing all the jellies around the area, then getting a person on each of the puzzle pads around the area ready, then one person flips the head to the south, and then each person standing near the pads must stand on the same pad type of face as the flip face the person got shown at step 3. If you need more information about this, please check my Beastmaster Durzite guide. Now you can check if you have loot at the NPC outside by viewing your raid lock. This resets every 2 days, or you can do a double raid every 4 days. So Beastmaster Durzak 2 times, and Yakamaru 2 times. Now all the main rules are on screen now. The ones in red are the ones that are harder to do, especially if you're a beginner. Most of the white rules are really simple and are ones you can do while also just being a DPSer. We have the base tank and backup base in case the base tank dies or runs out of food. We have the north tank, poison tank, double poison, jelly wrangler, main stun and backup stun, stun 5 and stun 0 and they don't actually stun. Just so you guys know, I'll explain that later. CPR and Shark 10. Now, if you're teaching your clan or you're bringing a lot of learners with you, ideally a more experienced play wants to take multiple roles. And within those roles, you want to think about pre-mirage and mirage roles because they can easily be combined as they are separate things. As for your gear setup, literally take the best ranged or magic gear you own with you unless you're doing some crazy role like poison tank, which you could do with melee, for example, but Generally speaking, for rage you want to be using ranged and magic, preferably tier 80 plus armor and a tier 90 weapon. Be sure to bring along any switches you need, your enhanced Excalibur for free healing. Always bring a shield no matter what role you are because you might have to do a emergency roll. You want a ring of death and a beast of burden like a pack yak or pack mammoth completely filled with food because you will need the extra food. Okay. So, we're going to be covering a full kill, and during this full kill, I will explain what each role, their purpose is, and what they should be doing. If you really want to know what's going on during a Yakamaru kill, I suggest you do not skip through this part of the video and watch it in its entirety. This way you'll understand the correlation between the different roles. With that being said, let's get started. During the fight, Yakamaru switches his position quite often, which is why I'm showing you guys an overview of the different pools and their names before I start off the fight. Usually, the base tank will initiate the fight and Yakamaru will spawn at the middle pool. I'll explain in detail what each of the roles do in just a second, but as the DPS and most of the other roles you have, you want to stand in the DPS pile for good reason. You want to be praying ranged at all times doing a Yakamaru kill unless you're in melee distance, that's when you want to pray magic. After 200,000 life points of damage, Yakamaru will go to the next phase by jumping to any of the other pools at random. After choosing the first pool, Yakamaru will continue going through the pools in a clockwise rotation. In my case, he jumped to the north pool, so he would first go to the middle pool, then tendril pool, then shark pool, and then sand pool. If he starts in the shark pool, the next pool will be sand pool. 
In this case, he jumped to the North Pool, which is the most dangerous pool for new players because you do not want to be using your stuns. Put your stuns from your revolution bar at all times during Yakamaru because if you accidentally stun, not only will you mess up the stun roll, but you can also end up killing your teammates, especially if you use abilities like Asphyxiate at random. Oh! Um, okay. Oh, f what the heck? Um, what the during this phase, as a DPS or beginner, simply deal damage, but do not use your stunning abilities. No exceptions, just don't use them. This is where the main stun or backup stun rolls come in, because Yakumari gradually gains a damage reduction effect during this phase, and at some point he will be almost immune, if not immune to damage, which is why the main stun wants to be stunning Yakumaru every so often, so that you can keep dealing damage. Also, if Yakamaru hits 100,000 life points, you want to off Yakamaru because the poison tank needs to catch the poison and get into melee distance for his roll before Yakamaru's health counter hits zero. And then he gets revived by the CPR roll, which I'll explain later as well. Then Yakamaru moves on to the middle pool in this particular kill. If the poison tank did his roll correctly, after 200,000 life points lost, Yakamaru will move to the next pool in the clockwise rotation. If not, you'll just have to do the same pool you did previously yet again. The next pool will be the Tendril pool, which has a attack rotation that repeats itself, which is 4 auto attacks, spawning jellyfish, 4 auto attacks, the blue, 4 auto attacks, and tentacle special. By the way, ideally you'd like to kill or stun the jellyfish before attacking this pool. Now for this pool, you simply want to deal damage, use your sunshine or death swiftness rotation, but you also want to watch out for becoming a metamorphosis or waterman, whatever you call it. Just like the metamorphosis ability, you turn into a watery person. And to negate this damage, you want to pass this on to someone else by standing together as a DPS spell, because otherwise the damage will get harder and harder. Now if you do get tendrilled, which is basically you getting choked, simply deal more damage to get out of the tendril and you should be fine. Again, just like with the North Pole, leave 100,000 life points left to give the poison tank some time to do his roll. Do not keep DPSing as hard as you can after 100,000 life points or you might mess up the pool. Now after this he will jump back to the middle, which if you've done it correctly the poison tank will have done his job and you will go to the next pool, in this case being shark pool. And with this pool it's pretty similar, 4 auto attacks, jellyfish, 4 auto attacks, the blue, then 4 auto attacks and the shark nano special attack and then he repeats his attack rotation. Be sure to stand in the DPS pool as usual and let the rolls do their job. You're going to have to watch out with this pool because when the shark nano does actually come you want to run to the beach as fast as you can. You can use Surge, but if you're going to be using Surge, be sure to Surge later once the sharks actually hit the ground. Now, I usually mess up this pool because I'm really bad at paying attention to the sharks, which you'll see in the clip in the video. But ideally, you don't want to take any damage here and you want to run to the beach just in time. And depending on your team, the base tank might actually call out when the sharks come out, so you can run just in time. Oh, if you haven't noticed, some of these clips are actually from me learning myself, so they aren't perfect by any means. Now I'm picking up Planksy because I'm going to need them for my stun 5 roll in the Mirage phase. However, first we need to do sand pool, so first we want to do the middle again, kill the jellies, get Yakamaru down, put him into sand pool, and then continue on. Now as a DPSer or learner, you don't really need to know that much for this pool, all you really need to know are two simple things. At 100,000 life points, be sure to off Yakamaru so that the poison tank can do his job, and if people are sunken in the sand, you want to free them, and if you're sunken yourself, you want to type F in the chat so that people know that you need to be freed. Be sure to not forget the base tank because he can also sink into the sand, and if he's positioned too far away from you, you might end up actually losing him, and that would be a very bad day for the kill unless you have a backup base. After finishing the pool, if the poison tank has done his job, Yakamaru will go back to the middle. This time, when he does spawn jellies, you want to finish them off. Always kill off the jellies before Mirage phase, because once Mirage starts, you do not want to deal with the extra jellies and give the Jelly Wrangler a harder job. Okay, so when Mirage starts, this is very important. Your positioning, depending on your role, is extremely important during this phase. During this phase, all of the other pools will spawn at once, and as a DPSer, you want to stand near the shark pool and attack the shark pool first. This is very important. The Jelly Wrangler will be part of the DPS pole until the jellies actually spawn and then he starts going around and tagging the jellies and keeping them on him, which I'll explain later on in the video per roll. 
The shark tendril will then close off the pool and the DPS pile will move towards the tendril pool and attack that one next. Then as a DPS after the tendril pool is closed off you want to start focusing on the sand pool. At that point the north pool should already be closed off. Once the sand pool is dead you want to spam on the middle to close it off with sand. Once the sand pool is closed off all you really have to do is finish off the middle pool and you're done. Now that you've seen a full kill as a learner slash beginner and you know what is going on during the kill, I'm going to be explaining each rule, rule by rule, and if you want to skip to any particular rule, please check the description below. So as mentioned briefly during the full kill, as a poison tank you want to stand on the poison spot and tank the poison, go into melee distance and pray magic and get eaten by Yakamari, then revive by CPR. As you can see on the ground, it's a green type of arrow thing that looks like the detonate ability, except it's green. You then get munched by Yakamaru and you get thrown on the beach where the CPR revives you if he's doing his role correctly. Now you'll have to do this a total of 4 times until Mirage phase starts where DBL is a different role. The easiest way to do poison tank is to bring a barge switch along with you, stand on the poison area, barge into Yakamaru while playing magic, then proceed to get eaten by Yakamaru and then put a tea bag in his neck so he turns into a tea snake instead of a sea snake. Uh, I think I just got a little lost there. Don't do that, but get eaten by Yakamari, then get revived by CPR, and you should be good. Now, the hardest part about Poison Tank is during Shark Pool, because if Yakamaru does decide to launch sharks just as you barge into melee distance, you can get killed by the Shark Explosion or Sharknado, so you want to have 100% adrenaline to use Barricade to be safe and not get KO'd. Now, as just mentioned with the Poison Tank, what the CPR has to do is click on the player that has just been eaten by Yakamaru, being the Poison Tank, to revive him. Usually when you see the poison tank getting into position, you want to run towards the beach, especially if you're on a pool that is far away from the location. Go there, click on them, and revive them. Make sure the entire bar is blue, otherwise if you run away, they will end up dying. And if you say that to me when I'm doing CPR, I'm just going to leave you there to drown, dude. As for DBL, aka double poison, all you have to do is on sand pool before Mirage, you want to stand in the poison, except you do not go to melee distance like the poison tank, you stay there and you take an extra load of damage. This is only necessary if you haven't done the stun pool first as the first pool of Yakamaru from the start. If you didn't have stun pool as the first pool during the fight, you will then have stun pool after the sand pool and you want to go into melee distance, pray magic, and basically get munched by Yakamaru as well. Kind of similar to the poison tank rule. You will then get revived by CPR of course. Then for main stun and backup stun, what you want to do as main stun is stun Yakamaru occasionally so he doesn't get immune to damage. But if you do it right, you will only take 1000 damage as a team. If you do it wrong, the damage will get higher and you can actually end up KOing team members. So watch out. Again, do not asphyxiate at all. If all your stuns miss, that's where the backup stun comes in. Usually the base tank can do this so that you can still get through the phase or pull. I will now be getting into the Mirage phase rolls. Here are all the positions you want to stand in once the Mirage phase starts. First up we have stun 5 and stun 0. The only difference between these two rules is that stun 5 is going to be closing the pool, so you want to pick up 5 planks in advance before Mirage phase starts. Ideally you want to do this once you're on the last pool before Mirage. Then once Mirage phase starts, you want to go ahead and move towards the Northern AK stun pool with 100% adrenaline at all times, go there and use the Onslaught ability. Now this isn't a perfect clip by any means, I even got blued, but what you want to do after Yakamaru's dead, you want to quickly go into melee distance and block off the pool using your planks. After that you'll turn into a regular DPS and you want to move on to the shark or tendril pool depending on how far the other players are in your team. In my case they were on tendril pool already, so you turn into DPS. Stand near the DPS pile just like the other DPSers. As for the north tank roll, you want to go to the northern side of the arena, attack the sand pool and evoke the stun pool. Stun 5 and stun 0 would then use onslaught on the northern pool and they should be able to close it off. And you're going to be tanking the sand pool for the longest period of time because it's the last pool you finish off in Mirage except for the middle pool. You want to cycle through your defensive abilities like Resonance, Devotion, etc. I'm not very good at tanking as you see here. This is actually my first time doing North Tank in this clip. But you just want to save as much food as you can as possible and keep Yakamaru phasing away from the DPS pile. Now I do actually get a jelly on me here which the jelly ranger should grab off of me soon. And one more important thing to note is do not go into melee distance because you'll take a large magic hit. I actually did that a couple of times which is pretty stupid and it's just a waste of using your food. 
As for the Jelly Wrangler role, it's really simple. You start as DPS once Mirage starts, and then once the Jelly spawn, you want to run around and attack them and use Voke, aka Provoke, the ability to get them aggro towards you and just run around and keep them on you as long as you can so that they don't attack random players around the arena, which will end up killing them. Be sure to use abilities like Resonance and Devotion and pray melee. As for Shark 10, you want to be sure to grab 10 planks before Mirage start, as you'll need these to close off the pool. Once Mirage starts, you want to move to the side as seen on the video, Voke the Shark Pool and tank it. You might want to have 100% Adrenaline in case the Sharks spawn and you can't run away because you can use Barricade to negate the damage. Alternatively, you can just run away once the Sharks come out. That being said, this is one of the easier tank rolls in the fight because this is the first pool that gets killed during Mirage. Once Jakamaro reaches low life points, get into melee distance and be ready to block off the pool with your planks. You then turn into a regular DPSer. Now base tank is the only role I can't properly do, but I can explain what you have to do in basic format in this guide. You're the one that starts the kill and you constantly need to have Yakamaru on you. You want to vote Yakamaru so that he isn't facing the other team members. This way other players don't get stacks that lets Yakamaru do more damage against them. You however will get these stacks and you want to use freedom as often as you can to have these stacks. For Shark Pool, you might want to use Barricade every now and then if you can't run away in time with the Sharks. For Sand Pool, what might be useful is Immortality in case you get sanded and your team members can't save you in time. I'm a terrible base tank as you can see and I run into melee distance every now and then and take a huge magic hit. Do not do this as a base tank. It's very... Very bad. The most important thing to know as a base tank is you will be tanking Yakamaru's Tendril Pool in Mirage Phase as well. You want to vote Tendril Pool as fast as you can because otherwise the Tendril Special Attack might be used on other players and you might end up losing a team member. If Yakamaru doesn't use the Tendril instantly, he will use it for auto attacks after the blue mechanic, so be sure to be aware once that happens to move out the way or use ability that negates damage. With that being said, that's the end of my Yakamaru's Beginner's Guide. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new. I'm still pretty newbie Yakamaru, but I know enough about the roles now thanks to my clan and especially people like Saratoga, Jasus, and Yagami, aka Anson Lao Wan, for helping me learn the roles quicker, especially the ones that taught me things through voice chat, so that I could make a guide for this pretty mechanic heavy slash coordination heavy boss for you guys to see. Anyways, I wish you guys the best of luck with Yakamaru and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.